Hello everybody, welcome to the Maasai Mara again. Of course you've been with Scott today. Uh, my name is James Hendry. Yes, and for the very first time in the Maasai Mara I am with the VM Duren Brak. That is his extraordinarily long thumb for a man of his height, 5 feet and 8 inches. His thumb is roughly the same size. Good. Now, of course, you may ask us any questions you like. Hashtag Safari Live. And we are looking... Actually, a bald-faced lie. There are quite a few further north than this, but they are certainly the most furtherly north ones that we've shown you. And as VM swings to the left, so you will see spotlights coming out of the heavens and onto the gland. Is that not quite stunning? Now, as per yesterday, we're hoping to find some lions in and around the migration so that we might follow them as the sun sets and will basically they get up and do something hunting-like. And we know of two groups of lions quite close by, the Angama Pride, who many of you have met, four lionesses, now 13 cubs, and they do have some wildebeest around them, but they were so very fat when we saw them on the way out that I think that they probably won't hunt tonight. If we don't have come up with a better option, we might go back towards them. And then, just behind us, we have the big male lion, Scarface, and his, uh, well, consort at the moment. And fortunately, they are surrounded by, well, should we say the same number of people that watched the Super Rugby semi-final at Ellis Park uh, this last weekend? If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we'll consider it like a sort of semi-final of the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup or the FA Cup, depending on where you are in the world. So that's what's going on here. They are over there, and he is the most famous lion in the world, and that's why there are so many people there. They are. All, he's under that bush to the right-hand side. And Marsha, you're wondering if there's no limitation on vehicles. Marsha, I have read that there is a five vehicle limitation on vehicles. I've yet to meet uh, one guide in this area who's managed to be disciplined enough to uh, maintain that status quo. Uh, but what they cannot do there, you see, is drive off road. And so although there, it looks like there are a lot of cars there, you know, the line is unaffected. He's in exactly the same position. They can't get around him. They can't surround him. So I don't think that there's any harm there at all. We're just going to look here. This is probably, I, I think we need to, as Scott was doing this the other day, and I'm not sure that uh, any of us have got it quite right. I think he's got closest. But how do we count a herd like this? I've heard um, various guides around the place. Oh, there were 200,000. Oh, there were 24,000. Oh, there were probably 26,000 wildebeest. There. Well, I think it's almost impossible to count them. I think once you get above a thousand wildebeest, it's probably very difficult to tell the difference between whether you've got a thousand or ten thousand. Anyway, I would have said around here we've probably got in the region of about three or four hundred. So not a massive group. We got some beautiful shots of a migrating herd going north into the northern parts of the triangle over the big lugger that feeds into the Mara River and the one that we're, where the Mara Pride are lurking around. So we'll probably go back there later in this evening if we don't find anything here. Uh, we will, of course, be around for the drive, and then after the drive, we'll, we'll be doing the Facebook Lives, hopefully if we get some action, uh, like Scott's just had. Isn't that lucky that he's just had all that? Very nice indeed. Good. We're going to drive around there slowly. Karen, you say, do I like driving or being in migration control? Karen, um, I quite like a bit of both. I like a bit of variety in my life. You know, variety and the spice of life and all that. Um, Karen, it's very nice to be out, I must say. I, mean, I think the migration control is, is great fun for uh, a few things, but it is inside, and it is, um, it's not even like the tent, you know. It's not like you can nip outside and grab a bush or something and stick it under the microphone uh, or microscope. Go for the microphone. It's it's very much it's very much an inside job, but it's great to watch those crossing cameras. That is really spectacular fun, and we've had some great times there, and we will have some more over the course of the migration season, especially as the migration comes into this area. The main crossing points are just in front of me there. 
and we're not going to go there because the, obviously our cameras are watching those areas. And so, I think there might be some more lions there. And I believe that Scott and his cheetah are now having a very small evening snack.